Okay, <clears throat> so we've been talking about cetaceans, okay, and cetaceans are all of our different kinds of whales, dolphins, and porpoises, right? And then we took and we broke cetacean, cetacea into two suborders, right? Mysticeti and Odontoceti, and we talked about Mysticeti, those are the big baleen whales, so they have baleen rather than teeth, yeah? Um, we also have two blowholes, and they do not use echolocation, all right? So those are the characteristics of Mysticeti. Odontoceti, are another type of cetacean. These are our tooth whales, okay? So just like you go to the orthodontist to get your teeth worked on, right? Odontoceti sounds like orthodontist, the toothed whale. Okay, so um, odontoceti are toothed whales and they have teeth in either, in at least one of their jaws, okay? So either their upper or lower and sometimes they have teeth in both their jaws, okay? So like dolphins and um, like killer whales and stuff have teeth in both their upper and lower jaws. All right, so they have teeth in one or both jaws. They tend to be smaller than baleen whales, okay? Uh, so a bottlenose dolphin is much smaller than a blue whale. Um, and then they also have one blowhole rather than two, like, um, which is different from mysticeti. And then they use echolocation. Do you know what echolocation is? Yeah, good. So what bats use, yeah, it's um, sound, so it's, Ex it's like sonar, okay? Like Built-in sonar. Yes, so waiting for sounds to get back. So these guys do use echolocation, and the reason why they're going to need to use echolocation is because um, they hunt more active prey, okay? So they hunt more active prey. Um, guys. So they're going to need to use echolocation to find these more active prey. Whereas like baleen whales, they're going to be eating giant like schools of krill. Okay, so krill don't swim very fast. They don't need echolocation to like find them and track them. You can see them in the water. It's not a big deal. Okay, whereas these guys do need echolocation to find their prey. So they're gonna need echolocation to find the mammals and squid and larger fish. All right, so here's a couple pictures to help you see the types of odontoceti. Echolocation. What is echolocation and how is it used? Well, um, echolocation is this process of like using sound to see. Okay, so animals that do this, they actually produce sounds. Typically they're like clicking sounds. Um, and odontoceti do these and make these sounds in these nasal sacs. Okay, um, so let me scroll down so you can see this. Okay, so you have your blowhole right here, right? And then you've got um, these nasal sacs right here, okay? And then this is the, the larynx. That'll lead to the lungs, okay? Um, they can move air in and out of these little nasal sacs and change the, um, like using muscles, change like the diameter of the openings through which that air is moving. Um, and they can produce these very rapid, either high or low frequency clicks. Okay, um, and so they produce these clicks. Those clicks are sound waves, um, and those clicks get focused into kind of like a beam at the front of their face um, in this organ called the melon. Okay, so if you have ever seen like a dolphin, they've got like a bump on their forehead, right? Their forehead kind of protrudes. Um, that's because they have an organ behind there called the melon, and that's what's going to take those sound beams or sound waves that get formed in the nasal sac and focus them. Okay. Uh, then that sound will go and hit an object, bounce off that object, come back to the dolphin, um, and then the sound waves will be picked up in their lower jaw. All right, so sound goes, hits something, comes back, and then it gets picked up in their lower jaw. Uh, there's a nerve in there that is able to pick up all of these signals coming back, which then gets sent to the brain. The signal gets sent to the brain, and the brain interprets it, and they're actually able to see using sound. Kind of cool, huh? They can tell all sorts of different stuff um, using echolocation. They can tell texture, density, like the location, how far away, and the movement of direction. They can tell all sorts of different like crazy stuff using sound. Pretty cool. Um, so these animals will use uh, two different kinds of clicks. So they produce two types of clicks, okay? Um, they have orientation clicks and they have discrimination clicks. 
Um, and orientation clicks are clicks that are a very low frequency, which would be like a lower sound, okay? Um, and low, low sounds carry far in, in water. Um, and those orientation clicks, those low frequency sounds, just simply give the animal like a general idea of what's around them, right? Like, oh, you know, here's like a mountain here. There's something over here. Okay, so it's a very general idea of what's around them. Um, if something interests them, then they can start producing what's called, what are called discrimination clicks. Those are high frequency sounds, and those are going to give them the detail. So those are going to be like the texture, shape, density, all of these kinds of things of the object. So um, the discrimination clicks will give them a very precise picture. And yeah, dolphins are known to be able to actually distinguish like just a little teeny, teeny, tiny wire underneath the sand. So they can find that wire um, buried. They don't even have to see it. Just using sound, they can find it, which is kind of cool. So uh, we already talked about this. Here's a couple more pictures to help you see it. Okay, so here's the nasal sac and then the melon. So focusing the sound to bounce off of like a fish and then come back and pick up in the lower jaw. Um, and then another picture as well. <coughs> Just to help you see it. Okay. Um, so those echoes when they come back are going to provide four types of information for the dolphin or the toothed whale. Um, it can tell them what direction that echo is coming from, which means that's the direction that the object is, right? It'll hopefully um, be pretty obvious. Any change in frequency like, can tell the, the dolphin which direction that animal is moving. So you know like when a ambulance passes by you, you hear like one sound and then as soon as the ambulance passes by you hear like a different sound? So like the yeah, it like switches frequencies. Yeah. Um, so any change in frequency can actually tell dolphins that um, the direction that that animal's moving. Kind of cool, huh? Um, and then the time elapsed before the echo returns tells them how far away it is. And then uh, any change in amplitude can tell them like the size and uh, density and texture and stuff like that. Cool, huh? They can have extremely detailed information about what they're looking at, looking at, all right? Um, here. Okay, <coughs> specimen spotlight on the bottlenose dolphin. Um, bottlenose dolphin tend to be a lot of people's or some people's like favorite animals or maybe favorite marine animal because they look like they're permanently smiling. So that the way the way that their mouth is shaped, they look like they're smiling at you all the time. Um, so they look they look like happy animals. And they're also known, or there's lots of stories about like them rescuing people, and they do actually help each other out. So they live in pods, and if one of their like pod members gets injured, you'll get two dolphins that will actually come and like go underneath the pectoral fins of that other injured dolphin and like help them swim and help them up to the surface. They seem like very, you know, nice creatures. So um, people tend to like them a lot. They're pretty impressive too. They can swim like 18 miles an hour. They're 10 to 14 feet long. Can jump like 16 feet out of the water, um, and weigh like around 1,100 pounds. So they are not small by any means. And oh, they can make a thousand clicking noises a second. Okay, so that's a lot of clicks per second. And remember, they don't—they're not like relying on their tongue to like make those clicking noises, right? So they can make the clicks much faster than we can. Oh, and they live 45 to 50 years in captivity. Here's some pictures so you can see like the smiley face, right, of the dolphin. You can see where they live um, and then dolphins jumping out of the water and then compared to a six foot human. Okay, so they are large creatures. They can stay underwater for about 15 minutes and recently discovered within the past like three years, um, they actually have an electrical sense. So we used to think that they had like they just had these hairs underneath their their snout for kind of no reason, um, and now we've actually discovered that those are electrical sensing organs, which is kind of cool. So not only do they have like sight, sound, taste, touch, all of those senses and echolocation, but they also have an electrical sense. Exactly. So yeah, like a shark's electrical sense. So they are like awesome. <laughs> they they have like all the senses. They're so cool. So, yeah. 
Um, all right, so fun fact of the day. We're in cetacea, right? Um, and cetaceans are considered to be whales. So all cetaceans are whales. You just have different kinds of whales. You have like baleen whales and toothed whales. So all dolphins are actually whales. They're just toothed whales. I know. Um, and then you have like the family delphinidae, which is where all the, like the dolphins fall into. Um, and the orcas are the largest of that family. But they're all considered to be whales. So it's kind of trippy. They're all whales. Toothed whales. So it's weird. Um, yeah, and the orcas are the largest of the dolphins. So Donta study that you can see around here. Um, you have common dolphin that you can see. Common dolphin live in pods of hundreds. So those are the ones that if you're like out whale watching and you get this big pod of dolphins that will like follow your boat and stuff, those are probably common dolphins. They're going to be uh, like black and white. I'll show you a picture. Uh, bottlenose dolphins tend to live in smaller pods. They're going to live in pods only up to like 15 individuals. Um, and they're going to be the ones that come closer to shore. So like I was at the beach yesterday because the beach was gorgeous yesterday. Um, and we're sitting there and uh, you saw dolphins like out in the water. And so those dolphins most likely were bottlenose dolphins because they travel in smaller pods and they come closer to shore. So the ones that you see from shore are bottlenose dolphins. Okay. Um, so that's the ones that you'll find close to shore. And then killer whales, we do have a transient population of killer whales that comes through like during the winter to hunt the baby seals and stuff like that. So pictures. Common dolphin, upper left corner, okay, with the white and black, okay, whereas the bottlenose dolphin is much more just completely gray, okay. Uh, and then this is actually a picture of common dolphin feeding. So um, you can actually tell when they're feeding because they force a school of fish up towards the surface of the water um, when they feed. And as they do that, that allows for them to be at a depth that birds can get to them. So some birds all start diving in the same spot. Um, so you get a big feeding frenzy on the poor little fishies. Um, and then killer whales. So these are actually the killer whales in the like Channel Islands. Yes, it's chasing a dolphin. Yes, it would eat the dolphin if it could catch the dolphin. Um, and this is, it caught a seal in that bottom picture right there. So, yeah. So that's what they look like. They might be able to, yeah. Dolphins are pretty agile, yeah. So, um, somebody in this class has the narwhal, right? All right, Leo. I'm not going to steal your thun steal your thunder, so we're going to skip that. Okay, just do a good presentation on narwhal. <laughs> You'll hear it all from Leo. Okay, <coughs> sperm whale. Sperm whale is the third largest of the whales. So this is the exception to the um, rule that toothed whales are smaller than baleen whales. The sperm whale is the largest, or third largest. Um, and it's different from the, the other toothed whales because it only has teeth in its lower jaw. So it's got like a long, skinny lower jaw, only has teeth in the bottom. Um, and it doesn't have like a dorsal fin. It just has like a series of three humps on its back. So you can kind of see the hump right here on, on the picture, yeah? Okay, so it's only got a series of humps on its back. These guys hunt in the deep sea squid, okay, giant squid. So remember last semester when we were watching uh, like the, that short video about the dissection of the giant squid, you remember that? You remember like the beak that of the squid, right? And then if you remember when um, they showed you like the pictures of the suction cups on the, on the arms and it had like little teeth kind of on the suction cup. So, if you ever see a sperm whale, what you'll see is the face of the sperm whale is very scarred, okay? Um, and that comes from like the suction cups and the beaks of the squid that they hunt um, fighting back, okay? So when the sperm whale finds them using their echolocation, the, the squid will like tear up the front of their face like trying to escape. So it sperm whales tend to have, uh, it does hurt the sperm whale, but it does have thick skin. So, I mean, it'll, that's, it'll still have scars and stuff like that. No, not seriously injure. If it got to like the eye or something of the sperm whale, then yeah, it could seriously injure. But it usually doesn't. Um, they also have like a weird hump-shaped head. 
So in the picture in the background, you can kind of see it. So this is like the front of the whale, right? Um, here's the pectoral fin and then the tail back here. Um, and that front of the whale uh, was shaped like that for a reason. They actually have, uh, their melon is located in their head right there, okay? And they actually have a large um, melon compared to the rest of the, the toothed whale. Um, and that melon is made up of like a waxy, oily substance. And it is used to, for echolocation to focus sound waves, but it's also, we think, used maybe for buoyancy control as they dive, because they're the deepest diving of the whales. Uh, so they can actually change the consistency of the, of the fat that's in there and um, help them to sink or rise back up to the surface. Um, back in the day, when whales, these whales were caught, uh, that oil that was in their snout Whalers thought that that was like their sperm reserve, so they 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 called it spermaceti, um, and that's how they got their name, the sperm whale. Okay, so that's where that name comes from. Uh, it's used used to be used more often, but is very rarely used now. Um, that spermaceti is used for candles and stuff like that. It's supposed to be like a really high grade wax. Um, and remember, like all of those things that they ate. So like they eat the giant squid and they eat those beaks and those claws and stuff like that. Um, those could be really bad for you, right? If you were to eat that, it could like tear up your intestinal tract, right? And tear holes in it. So they actually produce this stuff called ambergris, which coats that digestive system and prevents like stuff from um, harming their digestive system. And then um, they vomit it up <laughs> and uh, you can find it on beaches. And what do we use it for? Oh, perfume. Okay, so we put we put whale vomit in perfume, and high like high end perfume. <laughs> you know, uh, it's supposed to have like some sort of like musky smell to it. So it doesn't like original like first at first it doesn't. It smells like gross like vomit or whatever or poop or I don't know. I don't even want to know. Um, but as it like ages, uh, apparently it turns into like this musky smell that people put into perfume. Of all the things that they can use, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, here's what it looks like. Um, you can find this on beaches, and uh, actually it's very valuable because of what it's used for. And so you, if you find like there's like a ch somebody found like a chunk that was worth like a hundred thousand dollars like crazy so it, it can be worth a lot orcas um these guys orcas are the top predator in the ocean so orcas versus killer whales orcas win okay um yeah so orcas will win in a fight with a killer whale they so they are like the apex the top predator of the ocean okay orcas and killer whales are the same Orcas are just like the technical name. Killer whales is the common name. Uh, yeah. so. Uh, <coughs> so orcas, aka killer whales, um, eat things like seals and sea lions. They can eat fish. Um, they'll also eat other whales. They'll actually, that's why they get their names killer whales, because they do kill whales. What they do is they tend to find a like mom and calf. Um, the calf is smaller, easier to kill, more vulnerable, and so the pod will swim and like actually kind of like swim on top of the baby and like hold the baby underwater um, and cause the baby to drown, and then they'll eat the baby whale. So they're called killer whales because they do kill whales. Um, you just like the baby can't is weaker, so it can't swim up to the water. And the orcas are lar or swim up to the top, and the orcas are large, right? And if you have a pod of them, they're going to be like swimming over and keeping the baby from coming back up. So, um, and the mom will like try and help, but I mean, there's so many of them that they can like separate the baby from the mom, and then kill. the mom is a little bit too big for them to kill, but they can kill the babies. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's why the mom and the babies do stick together. Um, they, killer whales tend to um, 
uh, like stay in pods, uh, and they're actually familial pods, so babies stay with their moms for their entire life, um, and they'll all stay together. And that's what they look like. Okay. Um, they're in a lot of like folklore for indigenous tribes, like up in Alaska and a lot of areas like that. Um, and it, what they view killer whales at varies, as varies, um, depending on the tribe. Some of them, you know, they say, you know, killer whales are horrible, evil creatures coming back to like kill people. And then some um, tribes think of killer whales as like actually the souls of departed humans. So it just depends on the tribe, like what um, they view orcas as. There are, so there's like five different types of orca. There's four uh, on the on the pictures on the right right there. And they do say the, um, there's debate as to whether like they're different enough to be considered different species. Some people say yes, some people say no. Um, but you can see the differences between the different types, um, those four different types there. So in the wild, Orcas swim about 100 miles a day, which is a lot. Um, and they're hunting all the time. And, and there's no like recorded attacks on people in the wild, but there are recorded attacks on people in captivity, right? Um, if you ever saw the documentary Blackfish, it's all about that. Um, you can go watch it if you want to know more about that. But you take a killer whale, top predator of the ocean that swims 100 miles a day, and you stick it in a small pool where it has to swim in circles, and like, yeah, it's gonna go crazy. I would go crazy if you did that to me, right? Like that would be not fun. So, yeah, it's pretty much like jail, orca jail. 